guess the big, big story of the day is, is Bell. Just talk about him and playing well for him on Sunday. Yeah, we're happy to have him. Um, you know, he's he's an impact player. He can really help us. It's, it's like I, I met with him yesterday and we talked for a long time. You know, he's a really good player and he was really, really good all summer for us. And, but, you know, the reality is he missed 18 games last year at Florida. He's missed 11 games here. That's 29 games. He's missed a full season. I mean, you get 29 plus two for in the exempt tournament for 31 total. I mean, he hasn't played in a full season. So, you know, there's 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 going to be some rust. The player he's going to be Sunday is not going to be the player he is in, in three weeks. And so, you know, I told him, I said, hey, maybe you're one of the three percent that can just come back out and you know, but the normalized version of this is it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time to knock the rust off. And you know, I wanted him to know we understand that, I understand that, our team understands that. And you know, I think he's gonna be, um, you know, he's gonna be he's gonna be very effective. Uh, he'll be effective, you know, I think in the game on on Sunday. But as the season moves along, he's gonna get better and better and better and better uh, because he's a he's a he's a very talented player. He's a very good player. And he's somebody that's going to help us uh, big time. I mean, I mean, just look at him. He looks different. I mean, he's, he looks different. He moves different. Like, he just – I mean, he played major minutes in the ACC and SEC. This isn't some guy we just, drunk, you know, picked up on a street corner. So, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a very, very good player and will, will help us. But, you know, the, the extent of that will probably rise over, uh, over time. No thoughts about that? any change with yesterday's? What do you mean? Absolutely not. This kid, man, this kid set out an entire year. It's a joke. It's a joke what they've done. And, uh, uh, I mean, we've been uh, – let me put it this way. We've been misled multiple times by the NCAA on this. And I believe the courts before I believe the NCAA. And so we're going with what the courts said, and we're playing him. And I talked to his parents last night and his and mom, dad, and his sister last night back in South Carolina. We talked to him yesterday. And, uh, you know, we're playing him. He deserves to play. He should have been playing from the beginning of the season. Uh, he met all seven criteria for the waiver. And they just refused to grant it for whatever reason. Maybe it was me. Maybe I don't know. But, I mean, we've been just fine without him, but they've punished the kid enough. I mean, he had a mental health issue last year at Florida before even anybody even knew about mental health waivers. He had a mental health issue, <laughs> a documented mental health issue. You can go Google it and see it. Uh, and so, I mean, he, he the kid deserves to play. It's his senior year. It's his last year. Like, he deserves to play. We're playing him. And it's going to get – I mean, he, he's going to be fine. There's, there's, there's – listen, the NCAA is trying to bully the schools one last time with this, and it ain't going to work. East Carolina played Cam Hayes last night 29 minutes. Same situation as Felder. UNLV played their kid. VCU's playing their kid uh, uh, tomorrow. I think you're going to see 25 kids play tomorrow that are all in the same situation as Felder. The schools are done with it. The schools are sick of it. The schools are tired of them supposedly being about the student athletes but not being about the student athletes. It's a joke what they said in that ruling. So that being said, what could happen as a result of playing him on Sunday, Rashiro Lafayette? I mean, what do you mean? Well, with the ruling yesterday that it, it may get overturned today. They're going back to court today if the NCAA doesn't change it to the same judge to, to get a to, – to, if you read the if you read what the, the judge – was like 36 pages. I mean, on page 29, he expli- – I mean, look, there's a strong legal argument that these kids should not lose eligibility. And it goes to court, the kids will not lose eligibility. I'm almost – I've been – you, you never know anything for 100% sure. But this thing, December 27th, the NCAA is toast anyway. They're going to get beat again on the 27th. So, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a moot point. They're getting beat again. And they'll get beat again after that, and they'll get beat again after that. So, I mean, they, they can't win in court. Their stuff doesn't pass muster in court. And, you know, we're, we're going to there, – there's – if I thought there was any risk, I'm never going to do anything to hurt a kid. But this kid's been sitting for over a year. He deserves to play. He should have been playing since the beginning of the season. He met all seven criteria. They told us he met all seven criteria. And, you know, he deserves to play. And he's going to play. And he's going to play against UL. And he's going to play against Michigan. And he's going to play 
moving forward. We were extremely confident of that. And if something were to shake our confidence, you know, we, we would certainly do what's in the best interest of the kid. But, you know, I, there's little to no risk, in my opinion. And I've talked to four or five other coaches in our situation, and they all plan on playing their kids. Now, they're probably not as forthright as me about just saying it, but they all plan on playing their kids. On the court, it's got to be exciting to get, as you mentioned, a player who's played in the SEC and ACC back. What does he add to you guys, add to your team on the court? Oh, I mean, shoot, score in the post, he can pass, he can guard, he can move. I mean, he's – He's, he's a real player. I mean, he's a very, very good player. Um, so, I mean, he he will help us tremendously. Now, like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to set sky-high expectations right now, but, I mean, this summer, you know, it's, it's been difficult for him. It's been difficult for him. That's what the NCAA doesn't get, but it's been, it's been a challenge for him. You know, this summer when he, you know, when we thought, you know, we, we thought the waiver was going to go through, no issue. I mean, they, they made the waiver process for kids like him, kids who had a mental issue at their previous school. And I'll say this, the University of Florida, phenomenal. They supported everything. They got every, the, all the documentation. Florida supported him playing. There was four NCAA schools that supported him playing. So all that stuff about the membership and all that stuff, it's a bunch of junk. But, the, but he, he, when he thought this summer that he was going to play, he was – just incredible in practice. Now, obviously, we leading up to the scrimmages, and you can't play. We, we couldn't play him in the scrimmages because if you're not eligible for the games, you can't play. Him, you know, so he goes on the scout team, and you know, I mean, so it's not as it's it's not as tight. It's not you know, it's just it's just different for him. And so we've got to kind of it's going to take us a while to crank that back up to where he was. But I mean, when, how he was playing this summer, whoo, he's 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 very very good. I mean, look. I mean, he averaged almost double digits in the ACC. I mean, how many of those are walking around? You mentioned on Wednesday he had a hand issue and said he wouldn't play regardless because he was practicing with the scout team. How do you feel about him going into Sunday and what do you expect? From him well, he, we, we had the doctor look at him uh, at halftime of the Southern Miss game, and, and they gave him some um, – anti-inflammatory stuff and he's been getting treatment a couple times a day so I think his hand will be he had it taped up it's not taped right now in practice so I think his hand will be I think his hand will be fine uh minutes wise you know look we just got to see how the game goes obviously I mean Shoemate and Cullum have been playing great we're not going to mess with we're not going to mess with all that but I mean we've been a little bit short we've been playing seven guys and we kind of sneak in an eighth when we need to I mean we got now we've got a legitimate eighth you know, I mean, he's not an eighth player, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I mean, we got a legitimate now eight-man rotation, which is, what, which is what I prefer to play. I think eight's the right number. You can play everybody the minutes they want to play, not get everybody so tired. Um, so I, I think there's, I think, I think he's going to allow us to settle into a little bit more of a normal, normal rotation. And um, like I said, we, I've talked to him, I've talked to his parents. We've kind of set the expectations. We know where this is right now, and where we want it to go and we just got to build it's just going to take it's going to take a little time it's not just going to be like we snap our fingers and boom we got the guy who scored 20 some out on duke i mean that's not that's not the it's not the way it works does it, does it help the fact that um you guys have kind of established with five leading scorers this year so you're, you're accustomed to going with the hot hand you don't count on anybody at one time well i think what helps is man he's an unbelievable i mean y'all just met him y'all hadn't probably spent much time with him like he's an unbelievable person and so our play and, and our, like our players love him, and our players want him to have success, and our players are with him. So I think that matters as much as anything. When you know he's kind of you know he's like those other guys that are out there on the court. They all get along really well. They, I mean, um, you know he's 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 just a good kid. He's joking around with our managers. He think I mean he's just a he's a he's very he's just raised well, applied, and so he's just an unbelievable kid. And so or young man, he's not a kid, but. He, um, you know, I think that as much as anything is the guys like him. The guys are excited for him. Um, they were all excited when they knew he could play. Um, they were all fired up. And I mean, look, our guys. At the end of the day, man, it's about winning, and he helps us win. And we want to win. And um, you know, he'll have his moments where he has big days. He'll have his moments where you know he has to kind of slide in the background like some guys did for DJ the other night. And so that's just that's just the way it works. But it gives us another. Gives us another uh, piece to to move around for sure. A lot has changed over the ten years uh, in Union Buster. Uh, universities going to the league, uh, groups of players going to the legal system. It, it, I can sense that you're 
of frustration, you are in major support of any means necessary to gain fairness in the process, be it against the NCAA or the infrastructure that may be in place. Well, let's be clear. This was the this was not the schools going to the court. This was the attorney generals on behalf of lawyers for each of the players. I mean, CJ's got three lawyers. Um, so uh, this was not the schools going to court. However, legally, a lot of what the NCAA does is just it's just flat illegal. I've learned that through 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 all of the, through all my stuff through all their through all this stuff like it's just it it, it doesn't it does. there's a reason they're trying to get antitrust exemption from from congress and so i mean they look they just need to blow the whole thing up and come back with a new model and they need to collective bargain with the players it's the only way they can make this thing work and until they do that they're just going to get they're just going to get smacked in court I mean, you're just gonna get smacked because it's in any other, any other, uh, any other, uh, you know, line of work. What they do is totally illegal, and so, I mean, they just they're just they're just gonna get smacked in court. By, it's, it's really by the players and parents and stuff more than it is, uh, more than it is the schools. But I do think the schools are now realizing. You know, look, it's, you know, we, you know, it, it's, you know, the organization's got some real flaws to it. And they've just, they've just let stuff, you know, simmer. Think about this, man. They're, 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 that restitution rule, nobody's even covering this because I'm not talking specific, but the media doesn't understand how all this works. The restitution rule's been in place since 1972. That got overturned by the, in this temporary restraining order. That's a bigger story than any of this other junk. The restitution rule's been used once in, since 1972. They didn't use it on Memphis and the Penny Hardaway. But that's the ace in the hole that the NCAA's had. Hey, you can do whatever you want, but if it comes back and we win, we can punish you. The fact that that got overturned, they're toast. Their initial eligibility requirements are now out the window. Like all the initial eligibility stuff, if the restitution's out, you can just play whoever you want, which is what you should be able to do anyway. It's, this is how it's screwed up there. They're the only organization in the world that puts – so they put um, – you have initial eligibility standards, right? You've got to meet the initial eligibility standards. So they're going to tell you who your school can take. You can only take the people that meet their initial eligibility standards to play sports. And then they're going to hold you accountable through the APR for who they tell you to take. Either let everybody take whoever they want and then hold them accountable for the APR or give them initial eligibility standards and don't worry about the APR. You can't do both. You can't tell them who to take, then hold them accountable for who you tell them to take. It's stupid. The whole thing's stupid. And it's all, uh, it's all, none of it, it none of it, it lines up linear. It's all just, think about that. They tell you who to take, then they hold you accountable for who they tell you who to take. What other, what, what, what other job can do that? You, you can hire who you want to work on sound off, right? And then you're held accountable for who you hire. You don't get held accountable for what your boss tells you to hire. Your boss gets held accountable. It's stupid. The whole thing's stupid. And people are starting to figure that out. Jordan, are you for unions and players and I'm for, contracts? I'm for, listen, what we're doing now, think about the, just think about the NIL, because they've tried to maneuver the NIL as best they can. You guys are excited now. You got me going. Yeah. Uh, huh? If you want to go there, go there. Yeah. I don't care. No, I know. <laughs> but but think about the nobody wants to hear what I think anyway. They think I'm you know that nobody cares. But think about the NIL. The NIL was their way to kind of try to get around all this. But there's no way around it. Besides paying the players. They bring the value. I'll say this. I'm with you. The coaches, we're way overpaid. <laughs> the, it's the players that bring the value. And now they got all this. Think about how convoluted this NIL thing is. The rule is you can't, which is hard for them to enforce because once again, if they enforce it, they're going to get nailed on antitrust. But the rule is that, you know, the kid comes to the school and then they find out their NIL value, right? They find out what the school will do. That's the, that's, that's the rule in theory. 
All right. Uh, uh, you flying home for the holidays? You're flying home for the holidays. I assume you went on a website and looked at all the flights and compared the prices and compared the flights, and that's how you chose where you're flying home for the holidays. Yeah. Correct? Now, you may say, hey, I like Delta, so I'm willing to pay a little bit more for Delta. You may say, hey, I, I, but I, I assume you didn't just show up to the airport and get a seat on a plane and then say, hey, how much does this seat cost me? You're going to charge me at 500 bucks? No. So nobody in the real world does what they're trying to get you to do. It's stupid. It's circular logic. It's just dumb. But they've somehow convinced because they got all these people, the national media members, that get all their information from them. And so they, they just, they're lap dogs. And they go out there and tell everybody what they want them to say. But think about that. That's what, the, that's what NIL is. You don't get on an airplane and say, oh, yeah, this is the seat I want. How much does it cost? No, you know what it is before you go there. And then you make a judgment. All right, do I want to pay more for this seat? Or do I not want to pay more for this seat? Do I want to sit in the back of the plane? Do I want to sit in first class? That's going to cost more. But hey, maybe this airline is a better airline, but it's more expensive. So I'll use that. Maybe this airline is a better airline and it's cheaper. So I'll go there. Doesn't mean you don't, you, you have all sorts of ways you would choose. Right? It's a way that, and I, so, but they've tried to get around it. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. You ha in order for it to work, you have to be able, you have to be able to make the players some level of employ and collectively bargain with the players. All that stuff that the NCAA just put out two weeks ago, they still need antitrust exemption from Congress. They still need antitrust exemption from Congress. And it's going to be hard. No other industry that operates like this has that antitrust exemption. It's just going to be difficult. I'm not saying they can't get it because they may can lobby well enough and get enough lobbyists to do that. But, but it's going to be tough. And without collectively bar collective bargaining and having the players at some level of employees, it's tough. How, how do you collectively bargain with somebody who's not going to be there the next year? In other words, you're bargaining with athletes who are there. Not if you collectively bargain properly. You put the contracts right, and you can, you can control all the transfer stuff. Okay, so and then if they get out of the contract, you got, I mean, it, it, it works. Listen. It works just fine in all the pro sports. You can argue about it all, boom, boom, boom. And this is basically, you know, pro sports tied to, tied to academics. So would you see... So Let me ask you this. Go back to the transfer rule. Where'd you graduate from? Missouri. Missouri. Oh, good journalism school. Thank you. It is. It's one of the top, right? Syracuse and all that. Syracuse well, is like the... Media. Like okay, it's the top. <laughs> That's good. But like... You could have gone to Missouri your freshman year, Missouri State your sophomore year, uh, South SEMO, Southeast Missouri your junior year, and finished at St. Louis. You, in theory, you could have done that. You wouldn't have done that. But, you tour the state or something? Yeah, but, but in, in theory, you could have done that yeah. and had no repercussions as long as you're trained. So why, why can't an athlete do that? Well, here, here's my question to you. I'm asking, why can't an athlete do that? Be able to. I'm for you. And then they're going to come back with all this data about transfers and the academics, and they don't graduate as much. All right, but here's the thing. Why is that the NCAA's problem on whether they graduate? That's the individual kid's decision on whether he wants to graduate. If he wants to transfer six times and it hurts him with graduation, then transfer six times and it hurts him with graduation. If some kid wants to stay at the same school for four years and graduate, stay at the same school for four years and graduate. Why is, that, why is that their decision to make? I thought it, we're in America. Everybody gets to make their own decisions on what they want. Well, I'm with you on that. I just have one thing to, to add to that. Right. And are while you, we're at it, the, the it's not a... for a contract that's like it comes in and signs, say, a two-year deal here. Yeah. So there's buyouts. I'm, I'm fine with all of that. So a kid comes here... This, listen, college better, sports... Kentucky takes and McNeese gets a buyout. I'm cool with that. All right. That's the way America works, isn't it? That's the way I am. Like, I don't, that's why I don't worry about the transfer portal. Shoot, guys, we're winning. We got good players. I'm going to lose some of these cats. Awesome. Go, oh, that's America, man. Go, go make more money. Go to a better, go somewhere bigger. I'll go find some other guys that want to come do the same thing. We'll move them on the next year and go get another batch. That's the way it works. What's wrong with that? Every other job, every other thing, people pat you on the back. You do a good job. You get the opportunity to move up. Everybody says, great job. I don't, understand what's, I don't understand what's wrong with it. You mentioned you talked to a lot of other coaches. 
Yeah, not all of them feel as – there's one other coach who feels as strongly as I do about this. I'm not going to tell you who, but there's one other coach. I love him. We, but we actually weren't that close before, but we've probably talked three days a week, every week for the last – I don't even know how many months. We've become extremely close. I follow him. I'm rooting for him. I'm, 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 fan. I'm all with him. Were a lot of the conversations kind of similar to this, they're just not as forefront and honest as you said you've been today? Uh, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of them feel that way. Some of them think I'm crazy. But, I mean, look, if you want, the problem is we've tried so long to hold on to this old model that's just this just not going to work. So it's time you got to reconfigure. You got to adjust with the times. This was a great model in 1975. But this is 2000, I mean 2000 we're coming up 2025 here pretty soon. It doesn't work. The world's changed. You know, the world's changed. We don't we don't type on typewriters anymore, right? If you walked in with a typewriter, people would think you're, you're like they would look at you crazy. That's what the courts are doing. They're looking at these rules and going, God, we've moved on as America. This is, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Well, Coach, there, there might be some arguments on the other side, um, the other side of the fence that whatever authority is over the system, be it the NCAA or a group or something or other, maybe is trying to protect the kids from themselves and from these decisions that you purport to be, this is America, let them make their own decisions. As you well know, It's their choice. They didn't have to go in the portal. Maybe it'll make people think about whether they want to go in the portal or not. I mean, it, it's their choice. All these kids that we get in college are not all, but 98% of them are 18 years and older. 18. When you turn 18, you get rights in the United States of America. So if they've got rights, I mean, they can make decisions. I mean, that's shoot. To me, that's that's a learning lesson. You make that mistake early in your life. You got to figure it out, and and you 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 find a way out of the out of the the, the mistake that you made. I mean, the, the my point is they they're not protecting anybody. They think they are, but they're not. They're not. It's the the the, the kids and the families should have the autonomy to make the decisions that they want to make. And I understand it's going to affect us. I'm going to have guys walking out after this year. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I'm 100% good with that. I'm a firm believer in that. I'll try to keep them. But some of them just, we ain't going to be able to keep. It's cool. Move on. I'm going to cheer for you. I'm going to root for you. I want you nothing but success. And I'm going to use him to go recruit somebody else that I want to come in and do the same thing he wants to do. Now, hopefully some of them are having – got a bunch of them that will stay, but there's going to be there's gonna be some that will leave. I'm, I, I think that's great. Most coaches want to just – you know, it, does it make my job harder? Yes. But, okay, we're paid a lot. So our job should be difficult. <laughs> the more you make, the harder the job is. I mean, that's, that's, that's just the way I look at it. On the court, it's probably pretty exciting to get a front court of Felder and Shoemate and obviously Collins, who you mentioned as well. Talk a little bit about – what you can expect out of that dynamic front court wise? Well, I mean, we've got we got athleticism, we got size, uh, we got shooting. Uh, I mean, they're all three talented players. We may can play big now and move one of them to the three a little bit and get all three of them out there at the same time and be huge. I mean, there's a lot of different options that you have doing that. You, uh, DJ talked the other day about it could be anyone's day, and Shahadeh's scored 36 and had really good games. DJ Christian as well. Is that kind of what you anticipate with having a five that includes the th three and four of them now? Yeah, I mean you can you got you got more 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 weapons and more you know more things at your disposal. Part of me wonders if you did this to kind of deflect from UL. <laughs> um, but let's go to UL. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, a game that's you talked about when you came in here a little differently than we talked about the other night. What are your thoughts going into this, and what would it mean to go 10-2? and two? I mean, look, it'd be our best start in a long, long time. Um, it's like I said the other night. I mean, 
we've lost to them eight straight times. They've had our number. Coach Marlin's had, you know, a phenomenal program that's been a lot better than ours for a long time. Um, I know back in the day, a lot of our old-time fans, you know, this was this was a big rival. You know, the reality is, it's not a, you know, we got to win a little bit to make it a rival. It ain't no rival if if it's if if if, if they beat us eight straight times. I mean, we're just. We're just fodder for them and an extra win on the schedule every year that they can bus over and beat us or we bus over there and they clean our clock. Um, so, I mean, look, it's our job to, 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 to add some teeth to it if we can. If, if we can. But, I mean, they're, listen, their, their program has uh, been established. Coach Marlin's been there a long time. And they're, they're light years ahead of us in terms of where their program is and, and the consistency of their program. And, you know, we're trying to build something that is consistent and, and, and a winner, uh, you know, like theirs. You're not going to call 20 timeouts and do your, all your timeouts this final No, season? no. We're past all that. I mean, look, Coach Mara and I partnered together on the coaches versus cancer thing. He reached out and, 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 and asked us to partner, and I said, absolutely, we'll do it. Um, I mean, Look, this is about UL and McNeese. This is not about me and, and him. That was a while ago. I probably made some immature decisions then, and and um, uh, you know we'll you know we'll play them Sunday, and then we got to go back there next year. So I don't think it'd be very wise to to uh, to make any any statements if if we're in that position. We're gonna it's gonna be a chore to get in a position where we've got a lead late. You mentioned coaches versus cancer. I saw it on X, I guess it's called now, yesterday. Talk about that and what the plan is for that. Yeah, I mean, shoot, they've hit 18 threes in two games. So, um, you know, they, they, you know, we're, we're donating 100 bucks each, I think, for every three that our team makes or his team makes. I'm donating for our team. He's donating for their team. Their three-point defense is really good, so I may get the better end of the deal on it. But, uh um, you know, I mean, it's, it's just something that, um, you know, that we can partner on that's for a good cause that I think, you know, both McNeese and, and UL fans can, can get behind. Coach, I'm wondering, you mentioned about uh, like a certain group is the best start in the, the program has had. Are you using any of that in, in, in your coaching and your uh, practice uh, verbiage in regards to let's take let the history of, of this program? You talked about it being fodder against UL. Are you using any of that or are you simply – this is our start. This is a new program. We're not looking back. We're not turning pages. How yeah, we talk about looking through the windshield, not the rearview mirror quite a bit. So, you know, we try to look ahead and see what we got coming, you know, ahead of us, see what we got moving forward. And, and um, uh, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're, not looking, we're not looking behind us too much. You mentioned the crowd, obviously, it was a big factor on Wednesday. DJ was saying how they fed off of it. What do you expect on Sunday versus the Rockets? Yeah, I think it'll be another great crowd. I mean, obviously, I think there'll be a lot of people that come over from Lafayette. I think they'll have a good. I think they'll have a good contingent here as well. So, it'll be um, it'll be an intense, uh, be intense environment. It'll be a good environment. It's what you know. I told our guys yesterday, hey, if you just, you know go play intramurals if you don't like this, like this is what this is what you signed up for. This is what we signed up for, and so. You know, if you, if you don't like it, go find something else to do. But uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a good environment. Scheme wise, how do you guys feel like you match up against UL Lafayette? <laughs> Not well. I mean, look, they're they're the most physical team we've played. They're physical defensively. They really get into the ball. Um, they change up their coverages, ball screen wise. I told you they shoot it really really well. Uh, Kobe Julian's a really really good player. Their leading scorer. Uh, they got very good point guard play. I mean, there's just a solid, you know, Coach Marlin, he's just a, I mean, he's a really, really good ball coach. He's been been coaching for a long time between Pensacola, Sam Houston, and and UL. And, and, and um, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a damn good coach. He's got good players, and they don't beat themselves, and they're extremely, extremely physical. And so we can't let them, you know, be more aggressive than us. Um, you, you got DJ going the other night. Uh, how important is it to trying I mean we want him to get going um, he's a he's he's prolific scorer he's somebody that can really help us and I think he's got uh, a little bit of a uh, wide gap between how he's performing and how he's capable of performing and so we're trying to close that uh, trying to close that uh, trying to close that down as best we can and 
Um, you know, he's going to have a big game here soon. Hopefully, hopefully it's Sunday, but if not, it's coming because he's a he's an excellent, excellent player and going to be a going to be a key piece for us. Without trying to give anything away, do you know what? Maybe not Sunday since it's CJ's first game, but what would your ideal starting five look like with you mentioned eight guys who could start in a lot of places? I mean, look, we'll change it up by the game based on matchups and what we feel like gives us the best chance to win. And you know, we're, we'll talk to the guys and figure it out. Bonnet usually finds out the morning of anyway. He'll text me who we who we starting, and I'll 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 tell him. I always tell him. I think he wrote some game notes for y'all. I told him to make sure he put in parentheses tentative. Oh, uh, well, we can't turn the ball over. We got to handle their physicality. We got to do a good job on the offensive glass. Um, you know, defensively, we got to be able to guard the three-point line, close out on the three-point shooters, not get split in the gaps. Um, you know, we've got to be able to block out. They got a big kid, 34. He's kind of, you know, he's not as tall, but he's similar, kind of moving people out like 22 from Southern Miss did. We're gonna have to really battle on the glass and. It's going to be just. It's going to be a, a tough, hard fought game. All right, CJ. Uh, first, just tell us. You know, um, the time's come. I guess now. You know, yeah. said you're going to be suiting up on Sunday. Just give us, give us your thoughts and how you feel about going into the game. Oh man, I'm so excited. It's a. It's been a long time, but you know, everything happens for a reason. I feel like and. I feel like I'm more than ready for this and whatnot, and I just can't wait to be out there with my teammates and my coaches and everybody. So I'm looking forward to it. You've um, you've been practicing, you've been working out, you everything. So physically and everything, you're you're good to go, right? Yes, sir. Most definitely. I feel great. Okay. Talk about talk about the last couple of months. It can't be easy not mm -hmm. knowing what it's going to be like and sitting on the bench watching your teammates play. Right, right, right. Um, it definitely wasn't easy, but I feel like with the group of people I'm surrounded by each and every day. It's just it, it made it, you know, it made it kind of it made it a great situation for me and whatnot. So I'm blessed to be around these uh, great people and whatnot. Um, yeah, I just feel blessed to have the people I'm around. Wednesday especially, there was just an entire cloud around the whole situation. Talk about Wednesday and not knowing if you could play, if you couldn't play, and mm -hmm. now now today knowing you're going to play on Sunday. Right, right, right. It was um, – like you said, it was a you know kind of a cloud over everything and whatnot. But I was following it. I didn't uh, really know too much about it because just the uh, the details and whatnot. But I was trying my best to follow it and whatnot. And you know I was happy with the way things turned out and whatnot. And I'm just happy to have a chance to be able to play again. Did you have any contact with kids from around the country in the same situation? Did you talk to them or anything? A little bit, yes. I had a couple former teammates and whatnot. That we talked, we talked a little bit about how uh, what happened and whatnot. So I had a little bit of contact with the teammates, yes, sir. And what, uh, where do you think you are as far as game time ready to play? How many minutes? How many? Can mm -hmm. we talk about that? Um, not really. I just feel like I'm I'm ready to play, and I'll be happy just with the fact that I'm able to play and whatnot. So I just look forward to being at, being able to get out there and help the team and whatnot. CJ, nearly a year um, out of basketball. How were you able to keep your frustration? Right. Yes, sir. Um, I just, you know, develop new ways to, you know, if I need to, you know, uh, express myself or anything like that, like such as writing. That's something I took up. That that helps me a lot. So writing and reading a little bit. But I feel like mentally I've been, ever since, especially ever since I've gotten here, I've gotten in a great head space and whatnot. So I'm thankful for that. Talk about the, the support of, of, of Coach Wade and mm -hmm. the staff and the, and the other players through this whole process. Because it's been, it's been a while since mm -hmm. you've uh, attached yourself to this program. Yes, sir. I feel like uh, I couldn't ask for any better people to be around. They've been very supportive and whatnot, from the coaches to the teammates to outside people, whatever that, that may be and whatnot. I just feel, I feel great to be in a situation such as this. Yes, sir. Like you said, a situation like this, you're coming into a team that's 9-2, and two, playing mm -hmm. really good basketball. How exciting for you has it been to watch your teammates have success early on in the year? It's been great, um, honestly. I'm super excited for my teammates, super excited to be a part of this team and whatnot. Um, I, like I said, I just want to help the team any way I can, any way possible. 
Any thoughts about not playing with what the NCAA came out with yesterday about the uh, red shirt and that, or does that not really affect you because this is your last year? Um, I just I, I feel confident about the situation and with the people I've talked to and whatnot. We just we feel confident about the situation. So yes, sir. Well, clearly you're you're entrenched with the team. You know the talent level. I mean, this team can go eight, nine deep. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and that, that sports adage is only one ball. Yeah, give us a sense of your observations of how you're going to fit in and and how this team is going to will work you in again in that one ball scenario and, and how everybody complements each other. Right. I feel like you know with the team chemistry is so how we all like each other that that one ball as like you said it doesn't really affect us too much we just like seeing everybody succeed and we're not and as far as when it comes to me I just want to help any way possible is that whether that's rebounding uh, assisting scoring defense I want to do any, any anything to help the team win so yes sir that's why I, that's why I stand with it. Sorry. Um, you, you, you warmed up for the first time game day the other night Yes, sir. I'm super excited. It, it felt it felt different being out there and um, warming up and being in uniform and whatnot. It felt different in a great way. Uh, it felt right. It felt normal. So I just I can't. I'm looking forward to a Sunday and I can't wait for it. Yes, sir. Well, you could you change the color, the color of your hair from red to blue now. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I'll think about it a little bit, but I'm not. I'm not sure all the time. Don't mess up anything. Yeah, good, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Couldn't have picked a better one to, to, to really get into action. Now, how aware are you of this of this rivalry and the length of it? I mean, it, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 pretty intense in regards to the, the history between these two schools. Right, right. I've heard a little bit about it, and I'm uh, honored to be a part of this great rivalry. You know, to hopefully help our team get the win this Sunday and whatnot. So, I've heard a little bit. I'm still learning about it, but like I said, I'm honored to be a part of it. Yes, sir. X is an O. You, you talk about you're, you're, you're willing to do anything to help, but what, what do you think your immediate impact when you get into the flow of the game? Where do you think your strength will fit in best in regards to how this team is playing? Yes, sir. I feel like on the defensive side, I feel like I could have a major presence on that side, uh, rebounding, um, passing as well, too. I feel like I could, uh, you know, help other guys get a lot of open shots and whatnot. And, and then if I have to, I have to score the ball as well, too. But I feel like defense, rebounding, and uh, passing are the three major things that I could immediately have an impact on. Yes, sir.